we dwell in eternal bliss as part of this God consciousness, I think. No. Right, some people think that if you don't make it this time around, you get to come back and try again. Now, I'll tell you what, I don't want to come back. <laughs> I'll take this one time through and that'll do me. Okay? <laughs> All of these views are wrong, obviously. You guys know that, okay? But the Bible, a lot of people don't understand what the Bible says. The Bible does not make heaven out to be some wishy-washy kind of, it's a real kind of place. Heaven is a physical, real, actual place where we will go one day. Okay? Heaven is literal, substantial. Right. It's a place outside of our reality because it's a place where God dwells. Okay? It's a place that's only reachable by death. But it is real. Right. Okay. Revelation chapter 21 verse 1 and 2 talks about the new heaven, the new earth that God is going to create, that we are going to dwell in. Yeah. Okay. We're going to have physical bodies. Okay. They're going to be changed, but we're still going to be, we're not going to be a floating vapor just floating through the, com um, you know, through the cosmos. We're going to have an actual body. Yeah. Okay. Because God has an actual body. Okay. The second thing is, heaven is going to be a place where we will worship God. Forever and ever and ever. Now that's not, that might sound a bit dull to some people. Right? Okay, I don't know about you guys, but I could only listen to worship songs for so long. Okay? Before they... <laughs> no offense to the music team, you guys do a great job, okay? But I didn't come to church just to listen to endless hours of music. <laughs> okay? But one day we will be in heaven and we will be worshiping God and it will never get old. It will always be fresh, it will always be exciting, it will always be new. Okay, heaven has physical things, it has streets, and it has rivers, it has gardens, it has things that we can do, it has walls of, of the huge city that just glow beyond anything we can imagine. It's, a, it's an actual place. I love there's a picture in scripture about how the river of life comes out of the throne of God and it just flows through the whole city and it brings life with it and there are trees everywhere and there are gardens everywhere and it's just a place of just life. So much life in heaven. So much, because there's, there's no more pain, there's no more sickness, there's no more disease, there's no more handicaps, there's no more short people. <laughs> They're all going to be about my heights. Right? Well, some of you guys are moving up in the world, okay? <laughs> no, but there's no more physical limitations or anything like that, no more blind, no more deaf. All of that stuff has passed away. Right. It's a place of just pure joy and happiness, but it's not boring. Okay, one of the things I'm looking forward to in heaven is going to be great crowds of saints that are all around us. I like to think of, uh, I used to tell our church at Bridgeway, you know, we'll be standing there, big crowd of heavenly uh, you know, witnesses and stuff, and we'll have our Bridgeway banner. We're flying our, flying our banner. Yeah, Bridgeway! Woo <laughs> okay, and you guys have your banner too. It'll be slightly smaller. You can go over here. I'm just Okay, and everybody's standing there, just crowds of people that we can catch up, that we can talk to, our loved ones that have gone before us, crowds of saints, of people we've never even met, but we will know them. Okay, we will be part of crowds of Old Testament and, and um, New Testament saints, but also people from all around the world. It says that people from every nation, God will call people from every nation to Himself. That's why it is so important that we support missionaries. Why it is so important that we pray for our missionaries. Why well, we train and, and do everything we can to get the gospel out as far as we can. Maybe there's some even here this morning that God might be calling to go be a missionary or to go take the, the gospel to a place that doesn't have it yet because God wants as many people there as possible. He wants the whole world there. Right? Paul, Peter says that God is not willing that any should perish. But that everybody should come to repentance. Yeah. That's why he delays. We cry out, how long, O Lord? He says, just a little longer. There's a few more people that need to get saved, just a little longer. But one day, he will send his son, and it will be done. Okay? But we will be part of the great crowds of saints. And in heaven we shall know everybody there. There won't be any strangers. It talks about in... Um, the Lord says in Matthew chapter 8 that people will come from the east and from the west to sit down and they'll talk with Moses and they'll talk with Abraham and they'll talk with Isaac. Right? And, and there'll probably be great crowds of people waiting to talk to those guys. 
So we might have to just talk to some of the little guys first, you know, while you while you're there, while you wait for your turn to talk to the big guys, you have to talk to the little like Thaddeus and Simeon and those little little guys, you know. And then uh, we'll wait to talk to each other, okay? Uh, while we wait to talk to Moses and Abraham and Isaac and and, and fellowship with those Old Testament saints. It'll be awesome. And we'll sit at the feet of Jesus. In heaven, to me, the most exciting thing is that we will get to see our Savior. Amen. Face to face. Yeah. In the flesh, as it were. And we will see Him as the apostles saw Him on the Mount of Transfiguration where He was glowing and white robe and His face was glowing and all that sort of stuff. That's how our Jesus is. He's not some little meek, little carpenter, little, little teacher guy. No, he is the Lord of all. And he looks like it. Okay? And we will fall down before him. We will put our crowns before him. We will lay everything before him. Every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And he will teach all nations. All nations will be gathered to him. And he will teach them. And he will be their God. And Ezekiel talks about how he will take out our heart of flesh, give us a heart of, of uh, sorry, take out our heart of stone, give us a heart of flesh, and he will be our God, and we shall be his people. Yeah. That is exciting to me. Let's see how the Lord is. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Isn't that something to look forward to? Yeah. You know, Satan can do such a great job of beating us down with this world that we live in, and we have bills, and we have pressure, and we have this and that cramping down on top of us right? and we feel like we're just getting smothered but one day the clouds will open and our Lord will be standing up there and we will see Him and He will blow that trumpet and off we go. Yeah. If, we, if we're alive and it happens. Mm. We may not. We may be in the old-fashioned way. Okay? Which I'm not quite so much looking forward to, to be fair. Okay? <laughs> okay? But we may. We may have to meet him through through death by closing our eyes in this world and stepping into eternity with him. Yeah. We just don't know. As I said, the rapture it could be tomorrow, it could be a hundred years from now, no man knows. But I think that's why God God intends it that way as we close and as Pastor Irwin comes. I just want to leave you guys with this thought. You see, that's the wisdom of God right there. He didn't tell us when he's coming. Because I don't know about you guys, but I find with my kids, if I give them a certain amount of time to get a task done, what do they do? But they started immediately, put in their work and effort right from the beginning and get it all done and then they can sit back and go, no. They wait to the very last minute so they can literally hear the footsteps coming down the hall. I told you to clean that room two hours ago. What have you been doing? And then they hurriedly try and get it done, right? Because that's our nature. And I think if Jesus had it told the disciples, look, I'm going to be back. 25th of May 2019. Right? Uh, well, that was a couple days ago. Okay, tomorrow. What's tomorrow? 27th? 27th of May 2009. I think I think we would have wait, wouldn't we? We would we would wait until the very last minute, maybe a week before, we might start doing something for the Lord. Right? We might start doing something serious. And then maybe a couple of days before we run around witnessing to everybody, 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 everybody. Right, so, that, so the God doesn't notice that we did nothing, you know, for all that time. But I think the wisdom of God is we don't know. And that's how He wants us to live our lives. That we could get taken out at any time. That we could get caught with our hand in the cookie jar, as it were, at any time. So that's why we need to be people that are always living our lives as if Jesus is coming back. That's why we need to live in our lives with that hope, with that promise, with that assurance that one day Jesus will come and He will take us out of here. That we have something far greater. Right? Living for that hope that it's not a hundred years away, that it could be right tomorrow. But as Pastor Owen said in his example last week when he started his message, you know, how exciting is it when you're going on a trip to a new place? And then the day before you go on that trip, man, you're so excited you just can't hardly sleep. That's how we should be waiting for our Lord to come back. So excited. Right. We can't hardly sleep. Yeah. And He's going to come back and get us. Mm. Right. Hope that being an encouragement, Pastor Emma, you come. I'll leave you guys with that thought. Hold on to that thought about getting 
to give us more appreciation. This is a time when we're going to respond, respond to the Word of God because God's Word is not just for to hear but also to be done. To be, we have to be doer of the Word. Two verses in the Bible that always make me a little bit um, uh, not weary but concerned. And I want you to hear this. I'm speaking about heaven and all. Pastor Mark mentioned about this. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, it says this. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. They're talking about the trumpet that will blow. And the elements which will melt with vermin heat, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. The heavens will pass away. And the Lord Jesus Christ will return as a thief, as a thief in the night. In other words, that no one knows when, but he'll come, and when he comes, you'll know on the day. In other words, that there's no guarantee about tomorrow. There's no guarantee if Jesus Christ is not going to return tonight, or is it tomorrow, because he'll come as a thief in the night. And he used the illustration of that, meaning that he'll come when he's going to come. But when he comes, that'll be it. That will be it. And then when I think about that, the second verse that really kind of made me concerned in the Bible, in the, in the Bible that really made me concerned is in Matthew chapter 7. And I mentioned this before to you guys. And I want you to listen to this closely. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. Not all our people, all the people say, Lord, Lord, we know Jesus. But then he says this, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Meaning, have I not preached about you? Have not, have I cast, cast out demons in your name? And done many wonders in your name? I've done all of that, God. I've done all of that. But the Lord Jesus Christ says, Then I say and declare to them, I never knew you. You depart from me, depart from me, you or doer or practice lawlessness. <laughs> and that bothers me because there are people that will be sincere, perhaps, wanting to really to be with the Lord, know the Lord Jesus Christ, but then they've done all the ritual things. They follow the patterns of ritual things and they get into the habit, so to speak, of religious practices. And yet I said before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, I do not know you. Depart from me. Does it bother you? It does to me. It does to me. And it breaks my heart because there are people out there that really are searching. There are people probably here, here too, that probably be really concerned about it. But it bothers me because it's not in the things you do. But then about who you live your life with, who you know personally. And I hate to say that I have to, I hate to see that if there's anyone here that I see right now, whether that I see in this room, that will not be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Pastor Martin said, that there will be some tears when we get to heaven. The tears will be removed away, that's when the new heaven and new earth will come. That will be later on. But before the new heaven and new earth comes, when we be raptured, I believe there will be tears in heaven. Tears from our believers that are just saying like, I thought, I thought, my mom, I thought, my sister, I thought, my, 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 I thought they are, I thought they knew. They've been going to church with me, but why is he or she's not here? And that bothers me. I don't know about your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know what your heart is, to be honest with you. I'm not God. 
You can put the Christian face, the smile of Christian face. You can know about Christian lingos, know every Bible verses you memorize. You know how to worship the Lord with your hands up and waving about and all that. You may do all of that kind of stuff, but you do not know God. There is no fooling around with God. The key word today when the Lord Jesus Christ says, you never do the will of my Father. In other words, you're just doing whatever you think you like. If that's what your life is, you need to really reflect it. Because if you don't do the will of the Father, if you don't do the will of God, the will of God, you don't have to find it far, far away. God's given to us in the Word, in the Bible. If you don't do the things of God, if you say like, oh, I don't know what the Bible says, then study it. Be diligent, seek for it. And do it. Because if you do, the Lord Jesus Christ will say, come, enter into my kingdom. And so in closing of this, on the series of heaven, next week I'm going to take you all to hell. Not literal thing that way. But to get an understanding of it, because once you hear that message, if you are like to say the word, like, you know, the word hell in every word of it, you're not going to say those words anymore. Because hell is not like what you think, perhaps. But I want you to take to the Bible that every time the word heaven is mentioned, three words about hell is mentioned. Do you know that? There are more saying about hell than heaven on the Bible. Why? In the Bible, why? Because God cares. God wants to warn us all. But today, let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. If the Lord Jesus Christ comes, like the theme in mind tonight, or maybe in the next few hours, what would Jesus say to you? Not about what you're going to say, because you can say like, oh, Jesus, I've been to church. I've been to... No, no. I want you to think of what Jesus would say to you. Would he, would he say, come? Or would he say, depart from me? Because that's what matters. So I want you to do this right in the closing. Before I pray, I want you to seek in your heart. Pray, say, God, look deep in my heart. Seek my heart. Knows my heart. God, if there's any wicked ways, if there's anything in my heart that is not really, that I do not know you, God, I want to know you. Please, please, God, give me a heart to repent, to turn away from my sins and turn to you. Would you do that? God loves you. I love you guys. And I know God wants you to be with Him. That's always Him. You never want to see people departing from Him. But when the time comes, when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, when He calls you, you need to be ready. Would you please bow your heads and be added to the prayer this morning? I want you to think about that. Think in your heart. Lord God, I know your heart is now here, perhaps pounding, just like me, that there are people in here that you are calling them to come to you to repentance, to come to have a personal and close relationship with you. But at the same time, I know what the devil is up there and he wants to tell them that, no, no, that's not true, that's not true. He keeps deceiving with his lies and with the pleasure of the world, the earth, and things that are so and so promising. But then at the end of the day, when life is about to end, God, nothing in this earth really matters. So, Father God, I pray if there's anyone here today that do not know you, not to come to you because they're afraid to go to hell, but God desiring to know you, desiring to. Truly to live with you now and for always. I pray that we'll be humble, that they will be willing to submit to you, to call you to be their Savior and their Lord this morning. Before I close that prayer, I want to ask you this morning, is there anyone here today, this morning, that says, Pastor, God has Reveal to me. I do not know him. I'm not sure if I were to stand before God today that he will say to me, come 
into my kingdom. I'm not sure. The thought of God telling me to depart from me, that, that could be me, but I'm not sure, Pastor. Would you please pray for me? Pray for me. Would you please bring me to the throne of grace and have asked for God or by His Spirit to reveal His truth to me. I want to know Him this morning. Is there anyone like that by a testimony of your heart? As a testimony of your heart, would you put your hands up and say, Pastor, pray for me. That's me. The Lord Jesus Christ said the same the, the thing that if you don't if you not confess before if you don't confess me before others, I will not confess it before my Father. Is there anyone here today who want to confess this? I do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, but I want to know Him. Would you please pray for me? Anyone like that? Just put your hands up. I want to pray for you. Anyone like that? This is something very serious, guys. And you may think this is just a make-believe. You are being fooled by the evil one. This is reality. Anyone like that before I close in prayer? Just say, Pastor, would you please pray for me? I do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, but I want to know Him. I'm not sure, but please pray for me this morning. Maybe some of you say, pray with me. I'll come to you. Or well, Pastor Martin will come to you. And he'll pray with you. Anyone like that? Just put your hands up and say, Pastor, that's me. Pray for me. I want to know the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I do not know him. Christians, I want to ask you this. If you truly believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you know him personally. I'm going to ask you this. Is your mind set upon on things above? Or you've been distracted by the things on earth? Do you know Him personally? If you do, then your mind should set on things above. Perhaps the devil has placed some tricks on your minds to set your minds on things on earth, not on things above. Why don't you repent? Say, God, I've been distracted by so many things in my life, things that I'm demanding, so taxing on me, and I know those things are not going to matter when you come tomorrow, but God, I've been so far from you, I pray, I want to turn to you. I don't want to take these things lightly. Your word is true. Would you please pray to God this morning, devil? Father God in heaven, I know you can see everyone's heart in here. No one can hide from you. And God, if there is someone here today who do not know you yet, oh God, I pray, I beg you, that you would just humble them for whatever it takes, because the consequence of not knowing you when you come, Lord, it's too great. It will be too late. I'd rather see that person to be humble in a way perhaps it's so hard for their life, but God, their soul will be saved. Have mercy, Lord, I pray. Father God, for those of us in here today who know you, for those of us who truly are your people, not just believing you in the head, in the knowledge, but God, to truly have relationship, living with you every day. God, I pray that our minds, our hearts will set upon you, not on things on earth. That we will not find comfort on earth, but to find comfort in you. For us not to seek on things on earth to be our rescuer, but God, for to seek you as our stronghold, our refuge. God, for us not to be consumed by the things on earth because it's pleasurable for a moment, but God, for us to be consumed by your pleasure. Lord God, I know that time is short because your word says that life is like a vapor here today and gone tomorrow. So I pray, Lord, have mercy. I pray, Father God, that you continue to use our lives as a living testimony 
for those who do not know you, for those who perhaps don't understand the Bible, but they can see you living in us. Father God, may we sanctify our lives, set our life apart for your purpose, for your honor. And not to waste the life that you've given to us on earth. Not to waste the time that you've given to us on earth. For the things on earth, for the, the temporary thing. But God, for you, for your purpose and your honor. Father, that will be my prayer. And I'll be, I pray that it will be the prayer of every one of your people this morning. Thank you once again for your word. Thank you for revealing to us the reality of heaven. So God, may our hearts find contentment in that. We pray, we ask in Jesus Christ's name and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. If you have any concern, any questions, any doubts in the heart, in your heart right now, don't think about that restaurant you're going to go after this. Think about what I just said. And I'll be available here. Pastor Martin, there's some guys in here as well. Ladies that knows how to take you to show you how to have a personal relationship with God. That's very important. All right? And if you're here today, you're visiting with us, I know that God has a divine appointment with you. And you already had an appointment with Him when you hear the Word of God. I pray that you don't just leave this place and say like, ah, I've been to church. No. I pray that you will say, like, I've been with the Lord. I've seen God in the Word. Amen. The church is the body of Christ. So let us continue our worship this, uh, this morning and our tithes and offering. This is the time for us to worship God. And then I want to uh, love to come up here for us and lead us in, in this time of worship and our tithes and offering. This is for God's people to testify that the Lord Jesus Christ, God Himself, is our provider, He is our comfort. And therefore, we give to him what belongs to him. And so we worship him with this stuff.